Okay, so we have spent a lot of time emphasizing, you know, how linear vector spaces contain these abstract objects called vectors, and you know, also there are other object abstract objects which are called operators, and uh, you know, so the idea here in introducing this abstraction was, you know, to see how there is some common ground between many different apparently different kinds of um, you know objects are really the same in the sense that they have this uh, property that they are a vector right and uh, you know there is a certain common ground where all these apparently different uh, uh, objects can be treated on in the same framework right that is the whole point of uh, linear, uh, the discussion of linear vector spaces and so on. Right, so today in this lecture we will uh, we will show how you know uh, uh, operators can be thought of really as matrices right right so if you if you go to a certain basis right you can represent an operator of no matter how abstract it is and think of it as a matrix and likewise a vector right which could be whatever um, you know it originally is it can be thought of as a column vector right and that is the subject of uh, this lecture right and um, so what we will manage to argue based on this lecture is you know, that basically the theory of finite dimensional linear vector spaces is really the theory of matrices if you understand everything about matrices you, you have a full understanding of you know arbitrary n dimensional vector spaces right because of this connection that we are make about to make to representations right so let's consider an n dimensional vector space v right and let a be some linear operator on, on v now we want to construct a matrix representation for this operator so but in order to construct a representation for an operator we must first choose a basis right the fact that it's a it's a vector space means that there is a basis in fact there are lots of bases in general right infinitely many bases but let's just pick one basis and at this point we are not demanding that this must be an orthonormal basis although later on we will uh, argue that an orthonormal basis gives you some extra convenience right so let's say you have a basis even e to all the way up to en it's an n dimensional space so there are going to be n vectors in this basis and so you know the meaning of a basis is any vector in this space can be expanded in terms of these basis vectors right so consider some arbitrary vector x which is an element of this space and then we have the we will be able to expand this in terms of these coefficients right and in, and in terms of these vectors xi you will be able to find n coefficients xi such that you will be able to write x as summation over i xi di now we can think of this set of coefficients itself you know and form a column vector like this right so now this is just the regular you know um, column vector that we are familiar with although these abstract vectors x you know could be for example some functions in some function space or it could be some other kind of it could be even matrices right we have seen you know complex numbers can form uh, vector spaces you know all kinds of things can form vector spaces but here you know if you just tag together all these coefficients you know this is just our good old standard column vector right and so the point of the you know the view that we are taking here is that don't worry about the abstract nature of this x at all but just deal with the column vector right so you can think of this vector as really just this column vector in this basis right so that's the key point so there is a so this is your representation for your vector as a column vector in this basis and so you can do something like this for an arbitrary linear operator as well right what is a linear operator a linear operator is you know we have seen uh, that a linear operator is what a linear operator does right what does it do to various vectors it's supposed to take vectors and give you other vectors right so let's look at what this linear operator does to every single element of some basis right we have already chosen a basis so if you are able to find out what this does to the various basis elements we have defined this uh, operator right so so let's take this operator a and act upon some basis vector ej 
Now this is another vector in the same space, so it also has an expansion in terms of the same basis vectors. So you will be able to expand this as summation over some set of coefficients. I have to tag, you know, both indices i and j. J is a dummy, uh, so i is a dummy index because it gets summed over, but there is an index j on the left hand side, so that remains. So I have a i j e i, right? So this is, uh, you know, what what this operator does to this vector e j is you know represented in terms of this expansion. Now you know clearly for every j you will have a different you know n different coefficients are required i goes all the way from 1 to n and there are n of these so in total there are going to be n squared coefficients right a i j. Now this forms a matrix and this is called the matrix representation for this operator. So we have seen that if we know everything that this operator uh, you know what this operator does to every one of the elements of some basis then we know everything about this operator right. So we will be able to work out you know what its operation on any vector is because any vector can be expanded in in this basis and then it is a linear operator so we know everything about this operator right. So you, these n squared coefficients have all the information necessary to completely define your operator right and for all practical purposes we can just work with these coefficients it's just a it's a square matrix, right? Although A itself could be something, you know, a completely different beast altogether. It doesn't have to do with, you know, these kinds of matrices. But the point is that for the algebraic properties of this operator are, you know, entirely contained in this representation, right? Okay, so the, once again I have to emphasize that representations are basis dependent. So in this basis it looks like this, this set of coefficients but if you had considered some other basis it would look different, right. And what happens when, how these coefficients will transform when you change, go from one basis to another is a topic for, you know, a future lecture. We will discuss that in some detail later on. But now let us look at what happens to product of operators, right. If we, if you take an operator A and if you take another operator B, and you know they have their own representations. A i g is one one matrix which represents A in some basis, and B i j is a representation for the matrix B. Let's say in the same basis, we are considering one basis, but looking at the representations of two different operators. And suppose we are interested in in the product of these two operators, right? So the fact that A i j and B i j are represent, uh, representations in this basis imply these two equations for A and B, and then we let us look at what happens if I were to multiply these two operators, right. So I, if I multiply two linear operators, I get another linear operator. Now, you know, like I said, an operator is what it does, right. So if I can work out what this operator AB does to uh, to all the, all the basis vectors, then I know everything about this product AB. So what is AB acting on each? It is the same as A you know, fall, uh, with B acting on EJ and close in brackets. So, I will first work out what B acts on EJ, but which is already known to me. What B acts, does when it acts upon EJ is just this, the summation over K, B, K, J. I have used this index K, it is to get summed over, it does not matter whether I call it K or I call it I, but it is convenient to call it K here. So, then I expand this and I have summation over B, K, J. I bring in A, right, it is a linear operator, so it goes right through and then A acting on EK itself is something that I already know, right, from these equations. So then in place of A acting on EK, I write it as summation over I going from 1 to N, A I K E I. And then I, you know, bring the summation to the left side and then I, I exchange the order of these summations, right. So, you know, all these sums and exchanges of sums are completely legitimate because we are dealing with just finite dimensional matrices. And so there is no need to worry at all about you know convergence and all these kind of issues do not arise here. So we have summation over k, a i k b k j. Now but this object is a familiar object, it is really the multiplication of these two matrices as we already know a i k b k j will be the summation over k will be the i jth element of the product of these two matrices a and b. So what we have managed to show you know you should think about it a little and convince yourself that we have managed to show that the product of two matrices, the representation of the product, the, the representation of the product of two operators is, is equal to the, is, is the product of the 
two matrix representations, right? So one might even argue that this is actually you know demanding this that you know in, in any basis the representation of the product of operators must be equal to the product of the representations. You know one can argue should be the way one you know derives this somewhat complicated ordered operation for product of matrices, right? So you might you know demand this requirement that this represent the uh, you know this product AB, the operator a, a B. So therefore this should be the definition for the product of matrices. But I mean we are already familiar with this, right? So this is if you wish an argument for why how this complicated definition comes about. Okay, so representation of an operator in an orthonormal basis. So if you have so so far I have said we have just some arbitrary basis and I have said the basis uh, the representation comes about by asking what an operator does to you know every element of your basis. Now if I make it an orthonormal basis then there is a particularly convenient representation right or form in which you can write down this uh, you know operator and so that is the following. So if you have an orthonormal basis so we have seen that there is this identity operator there is a nice com compact way of writing the identity operator which is called the completeness relation right you write put together all these outer products of these basis vectors and then that has got to be the identity operator. Now this holds you know if e, e j are orthonormal. Now we can multiply any operator with the identity operator for free. So if I take a uh, linear operator A it must be the same as A times the identity operator. So and for identity operator I will substitute you know this expression for I if I plug it in here and then I operate with A on EJ, I already know that A on EJ when it acts on EJ I get summation over I, AIJ EI, right. So basically so that means I have this nice expression for, for this operator in an orthonormal basis, right. So we have A is equal to summation over I, summation over J, AIJ, EI, EJ, right. So this is a so another way of thinking about this is we can say that the i j uh, you know e i if I bring in the bra vector e i from the left side and the uh, ket vector e j from the right hand side. So then e i e j matrix element of this operator in this orthonormal basis is just given by a, a i j right. So that is that's a particularly convenient and compact expression and this trick of introducing identities operators for free is a recurring theme you will see this a lot in quantum mechanics lots of manipulations become very very elegant if you use this property and it works when you have an orthonormal basis okay and you know you can introduce all kinds of orthonormal basis you know which are which correspond to eigen vectors of different operators and so on right so these are tricks that you would you would play and and become comfortable with right but keep this in mind now let me give you an example of you know i said that you can take an abstract operator and give it a matrix representation, right. So let me consider you know a, a linear vector space of quadratic real polynomials in X and let us look at two different bases and how the matrix representation for this operator A, you know operator A also I am taking it to an abstract quantity, the, the derivative is an operator, it is a linear operator and let us see what this operator, how this operator looks in two different bases. So every vector in this space is a function of this form f of x is equal to alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x square, right. It is a quadratic polynomial. So you just need these three coefficients alpha naught, alpha 1 and alpha 2. So clearly this set 1 x and x squared is one basis, it is a natural basis to, to think of these kinds of functions, right. So we can denote them as e1, e2 and e3. So if we you know work out what uh, you know the operator, the linear operator A does to each of these basis vectors. We know everything about this operator. So if I do A acting on E1, which is the same as taking the derivative of just the constant one, which is zero, and then A acting on E2 is the derivative of x, which is one, which is the same as the unit vector E1, and when A acts on E3, you get the derivative of x squared, which is two x, which is the same as two times E2. Now we can put together all this information and form the, the matrix representation for this operator A in this basis and that will just turn out to be you know this matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, you know it is a very simple representation in this case. 
So on the other hand, if we had taken the basis to be E1, E2 and E3 to be a different basis, I am free to select, there are you know infinitely many different ways in which we could have come up with basis. 1x and 3x squared minus 1 by 2 is also an equally good basis, right? So uh, you know when you look at ortho uh, orthogonal polynomials, you will encounter you know this kind of a set of polynomials, this connected to Poisson's polynomials. But anyway, the point here is that you have another basis. You have another basis, and if you operate with a on these basis vectors, you'll get zero, e1, and three e2 this time. And so, therefore, the matrix representation in this basis is seen to be you know 0 1 0 in place of 2 you get a 3 here right not much has changed but the point i'm trying to make is that the same operator may look different if you had take you, you can play with you know different kinds of bases and you know work out what this operator looks like in this basis and you can also play you know uh, um, you know other games like take operators like d by dx or d squared by dx squared and then you try you can take you know products of these two uh, of these two operators and see if uh, you know explicitly computing the product of two different operators and working out the matrix representation agrees with the product of the matrix representations like we have seen or you can take the sum you can do manipulations of operators you know first you do it with with the operators themselves in your in the abstract manner and then work out the same kind of operation we also hold for the representation itself and then check that it's all consistent, right? So the the main point of this discussion is to show that you know, when you have linear vector spaces with finite dimensions, you can just think of all operators as linear operators as just matrices, right? And um, vectors as these column vectors. So in this sense, the theory of finite dimensional linear vector spaces is really the theory of matrices, right? So therefore, if we have a good solid understanding of matrices we pretty much know everything about finite dimensional linear vector spaces right so using you know this uh, uh, knowledge right so we will look at many properties of matrices in the uh, in the lectures ahead and uh, you know, get a sort of a you know, we wind up our discussion of linear vector spaces in the next several lectures concentrating more mainly on Okay, that's all for this section. Thank you.